they are known as Jehovah's Christian Witnesses. So then, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we do believe we are prophets. But, do we believe we are inspired? Oh, I was hoping I wouldn't find this answer, brothers. Inside book, page 1202, under inspiration. This is what inspiration means. The quality or state of being moved by or produced under the direction of a spirit from a superhuman source. So then, does inspired equal spirit directed? Clearly, it is only a question of degree. For what else can Holy Spirit do but guide one in the correct way of truth? This led me to ask, does the governing body claim to be spirit directed? Since they don't like to use the word inspired. Well, yes, they do. Watchtower 2006, April 1st, page 24. Go make disciples baptizing them, says, quote, the second question also reminds the candidate of his responsibility to work with Jehovah's Spirit-directed organization. Well, now I'm in a tough position. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses do, in fact, claim to be Spirit-directed prophets. Hmm. How can we, as followers of Christ and lovers of Jehovah, follow the lead of those who repeatedly utter, and I might add, print, erroneous teachings. That just made me think how in the, in the ministry we don't accept literature. Why not? Because it's full of error. Can we trust those who spread false expectations such as present truth, in quotes? What does present truth even mean? <laughs> I mean, let's Let's talk real here, because present truth was the, the phrase they used over and over again at the annual meeting, 2013. If it's proven false later, wasn't it always a lie? And if we lie, who did Jesus say is our father? This present truth angle is really disturbing to faithful ones. This can't be the only letter about this. Please put yourself in my shoes. Would you trust men who repeatedly play semantic games that prove misleading or sincere ones? I feel Peter's pain when he told the respected religious leaders of his day, Acts 4, 19 and 20, whether it is righteous in the sight of God, to listen to you rather than to God, judge for yourself. But as for us, we cannot stop speaking about the things we have seen and heard. Now, many of the friends encouraged me to wait on Jehovah and not address these matters with, with elders or with you, brothers. They say my questions aren't likely to receive a, spot, a response from you, brothers, on the governing body, but mostly they fear I will be labeled as an apostate for asking sincere questions that will stump the governing body. Well, I don't agree these questions are hard. And I certainly don't agree that they will stump you. Still, as I respect these brothers and their warnings, I'm submitting this letter through a proxy and thereby anonymously. Obviously, that's ruined now. <laughs> I do this, though. I am sure there can be nothing to their fears. Because really, I decided there's no fear in love. Why would I be afraid of that? I mean, as for the apostate thing, is it even possible for can someone really be labeled by true Christians as an apostate for asking sincere questions? Will the faithful of the Creed slave really slander a brother for following Peter's example from Acts 4, 19 and 20? I can answer that for you right now. No way. That's not going to happen. Continuing. The trembling fear of asking questions I've witnessed on the part of otherwise mature Christians seems out of place. After all, it is my habit to start New Bible students off by encouraging them to ask questions. Go ahead. In fact, that's how the Bible, um, as it cites there, the Bible teach books starts off. Relax. Ask away. It's okay. So if new ones are de deserving of having their, their queries answered, don't those with years of faithful service also, also deserve 
such kindly consideration? Why? Why is this? Um, Here we go. Please, brothers, do not play word games in your reply to these four questions. Please, please tell the truth. Sincere ones may yet choose to remain loyal to an organization, provided, of course, that it remains loyal to our great God, Jehovah. 